We want to say greetings to everyone and thank you all for joining us today. My name is Brother Hawk Bolden, and as usual, we're glad to bring you the things that the Lord have laid on our hearts to share. So if you have your Bibles, let's go to the fifth chapter of the book of James. And we're going to look over some things that we feel like the Lord want us to uh, bring out this morning. I pray that uh, you will be able to hear what God is saying, and I pray that it is something that will speak to you and well, I uh, bless you in your current situation. Amen. So let's go to the fifth chapter of the book of James. We're going to start reading at verse 13. And it reads, Is any among, is, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Everybody see that? So it's, it's telling you what to do if you are afflicted. Now, that word afflicted, it has to do with anything. Not just sickness. Not just disease. It could be an affliction of the mind. It can be an affliction uh, of the soul. In other words, with you can be afflicted with worry. You can be afflicted with depression. Any kind of affliction. Now, when you're talking about an affliction, you know, we use the term, we use that term meaning that something somewhere has to afflict. You know, a lot of times when we talk about even punishment, you'll hear the justice system say they afflicted this type of punishment or someone did this. Or, but the way they say it is by affliction. And so you figure that affliction comes from some entity. Now, in our case, as believers, it comes from the enemy himself, the devil, Lucifer. You see that one who was called Lucifer. And so this says it's in verse uh, 13 of chapter 5 of the book of James says, "Is any among you afflicted, let him pray. And so if you are afflicted in any area of your life, not just through sickness, not just through disease, you see, but also mental issues, also depression. If you are afflicted in any way, this Bible says to pray. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Let's go and keep reading. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Now that's, we're in the fifth chapter of the book of James, verse 14. Now it says, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with all in the name of the Lord. Everybody see that? So this right here lets us know something. It says, and we have to pay very close attention to this. We'll read that again. Is any sick among you, let him, who is him? The one that's sick. Let him call for the elders of the church. Who are the elders? The bishops. The ones who are under the spiritual headship of the uh, shepherd, whoever that may be. It may be an apostle, prophet, or whatever, but he's a shepherd. You see that? So those that are working with the shepherd to look after the sheep, is any sick among you? Let him, that means the sick person, call for the elders of the church. And let them, that means the elders of the church, pray over him, that means the sick person, anointing him with all now this tells us how to do it now it's so many instructions in here and people miss this is any among you sick let him the sick person call for the elders of the church and let them the elders of the church pray over him the sick person anointing him the sick person with oil and it tells you how to anoint how so? In the name of the Lord. Verse 15. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Everybody see that? There is a prayer of faith. Now, if there is a prayer of faith, that, means, that must mean that there is a prayer that is not of faith. Some people pray just because they know it's the thing to do. But this doesn't say that the prayer and their prayer shall save the sick. It says the prayer of faith shall save the sick. You see that? Now you have to be careful with that now. Let me go back to verse 14. Some years ago, um, when I was pastoring a church, uh, there was a person that belonged to that church that was sick. 
and they call themselves going to somebody who's working under me as an elder in the ministry and telling this person, well, he didn't even pray for me, talking about me. Well, he didn't even, he knew I was sick and he didn't even come by my house and pray for me. And I'm so glad that this elder, who was older than I am, by the way, um, pointed him to the scripture and said, did you call for him to come pray for you? He said, no, but he knew I was sick. And he said, well, my Bible says that if you are sick, if any among you is sick, let him call for the elders. Now, first of all, I wasn't an elder. You see, now that's first and foremost. But here's the thing. If he wanted to be prayed for, he could have just very well have just told, asked me, can you pray for me? Now, I'm going to tell you something about me. I don't mind praying for anybody. But it really does my heart good when somebody asks for prayer because then I know that they're at least expecting. I can't tell you the number of times that I volunteered to pray for somebody and it didn't go anywhere. Why? Because my prayer to the Lord isn't enough for that person to receive. A lot of times when the Lord prayed for people, he would say, Be it unto you according to thy faith. Had nothing to do with the faith of the Lord. He wasn't sick. The person that's being prayed for needs faith. You see that? That person that's being prayed for, they're the ones that need faith. That woman that touched the hem of the Lord's garment, the Lord's faith didn't heal her. He didn't even know who touched him. So it wasn't like his compassion moved on the woman for, him to, for her to be healed. Her faith is what healed her. And so it doesn't matter what kind of preacher you 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 go to to be prayed for if you don't have faith for your healing it just won't happen and it doesn't matter and i found out as a minister it doesn't matter how much you love people how much you want to see them healed if they don't have the faith that it takes to be healed they will not be healed and that's a sad situation because it really puts ties you it ties really ties god's hand god was here walking around in flesh and he couldn't heal everybody and we'll read about that. You can read about that in the sixth chapter of Mark. That he marveled at their unbelief. He said, it says that he prayed for several people, but only a few were healed. Why? Because of their unbelief, not because of his. He didn't have unbelief. He was faith. He was walking faith. He was born in it, you see. And so here, this says, is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with all in the name of the Lord. And I'm telling you, what surprises me is people will come to church Sunday after Sunday, sick, got something wrong with them, and won't ask for prayer. They'll go home and take their medicine, though. Now, I'm going to tell you something. If you don't mind that devil hanging around and afflicting you, he don't mind hanging around. And a lot of you, you know, he's only trespassing because you allow it. And you have to know that it's the enemy that's afflicting you. You see that? And you have to know your rights in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so that's something that the Lord wants us to know. Call for the elders of the church and let them pray over you. Now, some years ago, I dreamed uh, that, that the Lord had come in to talk to me about something. And there was a big pot of oil in the middle of this room and I stuck my hand in it and I was praying basically over this all and then the Lord came in the room and he began to talk to me telling me something really that had nothing to do had nothing to do with what I was doing there and he stuck his hand in the all now I was praying over this all because a relative of mine had called and asked me to bless some all for her and to send it to her and so I told her that I would I said but I, I you know I, I'll send it when I know that the Lord himself has blessed it, you know, because other than that, it, it's not good for anything but cooking. And so I'll send you the all when I know the Lord has blessed it. And so then there's this big pot, you see, of all in this dream that I had. And I stuck my hand, both of my fists in it like that. And then the Lord came in talking to me and he stuck both of his in it. And that was him letting me know that that would be a big part of the ministry. And ever since then, I've sent people all, you see, blessed all to help them in their infirmities and things like that. And so that's what the Lord tell us to do. You see that? That's what the Lord tell us to do. 
you see in verse 14, let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Now let's read verse 15. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. You see that? So it's the elders that are praying, it's the ministers that are praying, but it's the Lord that actually does the raising. Now, that being the case, some of you folks who have been prayed for that have not received your healing, don't blame the preacher. The preacher can't heal anybody. The Lord does. You see that? The Lord heals people. Now, if you're not raised up, you might want to check your relationship with the Lord and see where it's at. Or check your faith to see where it's at. But you can't blame the one, the preacher, you see that. Now, don't get me wrong. I believe it takes a righteous preacher to do these things. You see, but one thing you have to know about it is that your faith has, most, has to do with it most of all. It's according to your faith. Let's go ahead and keep reading. And if he ha have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. So you see how sins and healing go hand in hand? The forgiveness of sins and healing go hand in hand? Amen. And we'll get on that the next time we're before you. My prayer is that you will understand what the Lord is saying to you this morning. You don't have to walk around afflicted. You can pray. You can call for the elders to be prayed for, or you can ask for prayer, and the elders can pray for you, and the Lord will raise you up if you believe that. Amen. If you want to see a miracle, believe God for a miracle and watch it happen. But so many people are used to living in their comfort zone. They'd rather not ask for anything so, they're not, so that they're not disappointed when it don't happen. And that's not God's will. That's not faith. That's fear. I'd rather ask. And, and, and take my chances in the Lord. I believe the Lord. And I'm like the, the three Hebrew boys. Even if the Lord don't deliver me, that's not going to stop me from believing in him. And that's not going to stop him from being who he is if he chose not to. But I'm going to believe that he chose to deliver me. And I believe that he have chosen to deliver you by shedding his blood on the cross. Amen. We want to say thank you all for joining us today. My prayers that something have been said that have been a blessing to you, and we pray that you will continue to listen into this broadcast. Have a blessed day.